What's good, YouTube? VK here. So, I want to do something a little bit different for you guys tonight. We're not going to do any reactions tonight because I broke my fucking laptop. <laughs> that. That's a thing that happens. So, I have to go get another one, which isn't going to be an issue. It's just that I don't have it right now. So, we're going to fucking do something else for you guys tonight. I was going through my old notebooks from when I was like 19, 19, 20. It was when my anxiety and stuff first started getting really bad. It was when I first started problem drinking heavily and had my first experiences with actual heavy alcoholism as a young person. That wasn't just like the casual drinking of high school partying and that sort of stuff. So these are things that I wrote during that period of my life. And I was going through my old notebooks and I was like, shit, I need to read these to because I felt like you guys ask me a lot like what younger me would have been like and stuff like that. My older thoughts and things like that. <clears throat> And this is a shining example. I found three pages in my notebook that are perfect examples of, I think, the, the kind of headspace that I was in at that period of my life. So I figured this would be something special for you guys because you guys are always asking for like older kind of things like where'd you come from? What were you doing before all of the crazy alcoholism and that sort of shit? So. I'm going to give you guys some of that. So this first page that I found here, it just says, what does the world need? And has a bullet list. <laughs> so we have, what does the world need? Love, peace, respect, unity, you, me, everybody. Less pollution, more sensitivity towards the environment, more humanity towards each other, intelligent people, less money, less hatred, less depression, anxiety, and other mental disorders, more thoughtfulness, less greed, open-mindedness, equal rights, less poverty, less homelessness, less drug addiction, less fear. That's our list that I came up with when I was 19 years old. Followed by this, I can now conclude that if anybody else or myself want to make this world better, the list of goals is a long one. It's a pipe dream. I feel like I am here for a reason, like something big is coming. I've realized that setting examples will influence people more than anything. I'm going to be the change and hope that people follow along. If not, then fuck it. I think we definitely reached the fuck it for quite a few years of that. Right? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Those few years of all the drugging and drinking, it was about, I'd say, eight years. Yeah, we went about eight years or so heavy on the drinking and the drugging. Well, the drugging ended way before the drinking. You guys know that. So that was like a halfway point kind of thing with that. But the drinking continued up to like eight years ish somewhere around there. So yeah, that's where my head was with the world back at that period of my life. And I think that uh, there's some very good bullet points inside of there that need applied to today definitely more so than any time ever with where we are um i think that the most important ones in that are love peace respect and unity peace love unity respect if you say them in the proper order right plur the the common little rave theme it's a raver thing that they say it raves and stuff like that peace love unity respect the plur motto so I think that those are like the super, super important ones, right, to start off the list. But I think you, me, and everybody are probably the super most important ones because all we really are is the universe just experiencing itself. So what point of a universe would there be without us? We're just the conscious effect of it experiencing itself, whether you want to accept that or not. 
it is what it is, right? That's where we are, and that's what we're doing here. And we're it's just like vibes, right? It's like molecules bouncing off of each other just on a larger scale than the actual atoms and stuff like that. We're built up of all of those, and we're able to walk and talk and do actions. And the fact that that's even a thing... I think that that kind of proves in a sense that there has to be a creator. There has to be something conscious and sentient that wanted to experience itself in the first place. But I think that itself may have been a little bit too singular for it. It wanted more. So here we are. That's a crazy way to think of it, but I truly believe that that's probably the base of what's actually going on here in the world with all of this. You can quote me on that if you would like, but I know that some people probably will disagree with that because they have their own beliefs, and that's perfectly fine. Everybody's allowed to have their own beliefs and that sort of thing, so... We can all believe in what we want to believe in, but what I just said to you is my honest opinion of what I truly think that all of this is, and I think that God is that powerful singularity that decided, I want to experience every part of myself outside of myself, and now we're all here, and source watches (laughs) source watches and source guides because we are source and that's that i think less homelessness less drug addiction less fear are very very important ones less poverty as well equal rights are also very important treating each other equally making sure people all have the same thing being open-minded to new ideas is always fucking important Uh, You don't have to agree with the new ideas, just be open to them and consider, actually study them, actually do the research and make a decision based on the factors of it rather than face value judgments, you know, that sort of thing. The less poverty and less homelessness is obvious. I mean, look at Look at the streets and the way that so many people live. Drug addiction. We got a fentanyl epidemic. We got fucking opioids were the epidemic way before fentanyl became the big thing. It was opioids whenever um, all of the painkillers and quaaludes and all that kind of stuff were coming off of the market back in the day. That's whenever the heroin and dope epidemic really started. People were doing heroin, a lot of meth and shit like that. Whenever coke became more hard to come by, meth became more popular. So it's like there's so many different fucking factors that played into that arriving where we have now. And I think that's a fucking serious problem as somebody who has literally done that to myself and managed to survive it and pull myself into something that can get on here and talk to you guys about wild shit like this. I think that all things considered, uh, drug addiction should be our big primary focus because if we solve the addiction problem, we'll solve 70% of the poverty and homeless problem. Cause then we won't have sick people who can't work and, then they'll be able to work and they will no longer be engulfed in full poverty. I mean, you'll still experience poverty on a nine to five basis. If that's like the job and stuff that you're doing, you aren't obviously going to be making the big bucks and stuff off of that. You're still going to be hustling and struggling to pay certain things and stuff like that. But I think if you can pull yourself out of the streets and fucking get out of that homelessness and cure your addictions and your afflictions that's where the trend to arriving away from poverty begins so yeah that is that one now let's see here this next one though we we said love was an important one we got a whole fucking rant about that on the next page so what is love i wrote one of those when I was 19. So here we go. It says, I find this question rattling through my thoughts constantly. It's not an easy question to answer because love can be many different things. Love can be mixed with hatred. Love can be bittersweet. 
Love can come from the mind, the heart, and the soul. You can feel it in your whole body when it hits. It's a tickle, a burn, a sting, and it warms your insides. It makes your troubles seem to crumble away, at least temporarily. Love is a drug. Everybody's addiction. The one thing that every person craves. But what about when you feel like love is not to be found? What comes next? Is it sadness or sorrow? Depression or anxiety? How hard does it hit you? And how bad does it hurt? Do you cry or do you laugh? Pain is only temporary, but emotions do not ever stop. It is a cycle that tries to take control of everything that makes you who you are. You become a shadow of yourself. You can't just ignore it either. It punches, pokes, and prods at you until you are on your knees, begging for something more. What does it mean to fall in love? Does it hurt or does it save you? When you can't have the one that you love, that can turn into a resentment. Now your love is bittersweet. If only you could stop wishing and hoping maybe everything would be okay. But is it ever really okay? Or do you still find a reason to be sad? Is it you, dear sadness? Are you the one we love? I want to be free. I can't have freedom until I have love. Until then I will be in hell. But someday, somewhere, somehow, someone will help to save me. And that is why I want to stay alive. <sighs> Guys, when I read that back, get ready to find something to make a video for you guys with since I'm not making reactions tonight. I was like, what in the hell was 19 year old me doing with himself? <laughs> like, I was going through it, man. I, I don't know. I was going through a fucking time. Like, I have... I put out, like, between the time of 19 to 21, I think I put out, like, five or six albums, like, five or six projects, and all of them were so fucking dark. They were, like, political, mixed with punky, angsty, fuck you kind of lyrics, but also mixed with, I don't know if I want to be alive, and I'm not sure if... I'm ever going to know what love is, and I feel nihilistic and fucking mischievous as hell. That's really what the music was like. Um, I can actually probably, if you guys are interested in hearing that older music, it's all up online. <laughs> so, I'm not going to tell you that it's very good. <laughs> like, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the best shit ever vocally, especially. The lyrics, though, uh, it really captured what I was going for at the time. And the people that listened and the people that supported at that time, I was in my hometown just playing shows and shit like that, so it was really a local kind of thing for me at that point of making music. Everybody was like, dude, this is so fucking relatable to everything that we go through in this city. Like, you're like giving us what we need to hear. And I was like, I'm giving myself what I need to hear too. <laughs> like, thanks guys, right? That's what it was back then. And I'm so grateful for all of those people that supported and many of them still support to this day. And I'm so fucking grateful for you guys. If any of you are watching this, any of you that were sitting on that fucking floor at my first show down at the Butler Art Center, I appreciate the fuck out of you guys. Thank you for everything. You guys are wild. We had some wild times, did we not? Right? <laughs> but this here... I mean, just reading over this, I was like, damn, that is so much to think about and take in. And it's so true to the essence of love and the way it throws you 90 million different directions inside of your mind and inside of your head. The different levels of it that can be experienced. You can fall in love with a person. You can love a person as a friend. You can have familial type of love where someone's like fam to you. You can fucking just love a color, a color could make you happy, F you could love food, like you guys know, like, there's layers to love, there's superficial layers, and then there's, like, the layers that will make you lose your fucking mind, 
if you can't control those emotions inside of it, like you see people like will fall out of love or not out of love, but like they'll fall out of a situation with a person that they were in love with and they just lose their fucking mind. Like don't know what to do with their self. Everything goes to shit as somebody who experienced something like that for myself, much to my own fault because I was just making stupid fucking decisions and drinking too much at the time of my life where love was not going to be properly accessible to me because I wasn't resonating with anything that you, I guess would call the Christ like energy that was just had like a, a purity and a willingness to understand and learn and grow. And that sort of, I wasn't resonating inside of that. It was a very stubborn, angry, mischievous kind of energy back then. And I tried to channel it into love because love's what I always wanted, but there was too much fucked up, right? It it was too fucked up. I couldn't channel it properly. So it's like I'm giving all of this to people musically and stuff like that and trying to send this message of love and everything, but I couldn't get it to resonate quite properly due to those parts of myself that I wasn't able to love properly. And that was due to so many addictions and mistakes being made inside of that that caused like guilt and shame and that sort of thing. And it's like, when you're unable to properly love yourself, I don't think you can properly love anything at all. I think everything does become bittersweet. And I think that's where this was coming from is because I was set in, setting inside of that feeling so heavily at this period of time in my life where when I read back on this, I don't feel like that anymore. It's like reading something from a stranger because I don't feel that way anymore. And that's much thanks to you guys and everybody else that has supported me over the years and not gave up on me over the years. It's so much due to that. And it's it's so humbling to realize that things and people outside of yourself really can be the factor that helps you to learn how to love yourself properly. If you're willing to let it in and actually take the advice and everything that's being offered to you by those outside sources it's like I said it's something that I wasn't willing to accept when I was younger and I wish I could have accepted it when I was younger because I'd definitely be much further along than I am now and I'm not saying that where we are now is nothing like we've certainly fucking gone and done the thing over the last year and it's been a fucking blast we've really grown we've made so much progress and it's just continuing each and every day we grow more and more and we learn more and more and do more awesome things together and it's fucking fantastic man it's really great to be here but I mean looking back I'm like Shit, if you could do this in a year after quitting drinking and start to do this with yourself, where the fuck would you be if you would have quit drinking before you turned 21? Like, God damn, man. It's so frustrating to think about, right? I can imagine you guys, some of you guys, a lot of you can probably relate to that because I know you guys have struggled with that sort of stuff in your life too. And it's fucking wild, ain't it, man? But I just read that thing I wrote about love, and I was like, Jesus, man, that is so deep. You were sad, man. But we're not sad anymore. So that's okay, right? We aren't sad anymore. <laughs> then I have this thing that I wrote right here. That uh, It's one of my favorite pieces of poetry I ever wrote, and I just want to read this for you to close out this video um i really hope that you guys enjoyed me letting you into that and kind of talking about those kinds of things and telling you a little bit of the story and everything a little bit more of the story just by looking at this notebook here but this right here is one of my favorite poetry pieces i've ever written and i never named it so if any of you listen to this right here and you think that you might have a name for it. Shoot them out there. Maybe 
if we get some cool names that you guys shoot out for this, we could possibly use one of them at some point. So I'm going to read this piece of poetry I wrote, heavily influenced by uh, Morrison, definitely a heavy Jim Morrison influence at the time. He was my heaviest influence back in these days. Him and Dax Riggs from Acid Bath were definitely my two biggest musical influences around this time. And uh, Pat the Bunny as well from Ramshackle Glory was another big influence for me when it came to the folk punk side of things. So let's read this to you guys. This is an interesting piece of poetry that I found that I liked a whole lot. It said, so you think you can dance with the devil and his snake-like charm. Will you make it out alive? We will thrive in our existence, a mesmerizing destruction, a savage beast we are, a rare breed of existence, painful and haunting, arrogant and raunchy, broken and beaten. We scramble down the hallways filled with doors, 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 always more doors. Does the hallway ever end? We've been walking for years but there's still just more doors. We open them with curiosity. Who or what lies ahead? Where do we go if we run out of doors? Is there one final door at the end of the wall? They say the best gets saved for last. I hope the last door is different. The rest of them have presented ugly truths of lust, greed, wrath, and hatred. I hope the last one holds peace, love, unity, and respect. We know not what we do not understand, for understanding is the root of all that is good. We are blessed with witty intellect and sharp looks, yet plagued with black clouds and rusty hooks. We gasp for air through the smell of sulfur, seeing the light come closer and closer, brighter and brighter, until the final door. In awe we stand, shivers up the spine, Remembering old times. Hesitation. Pause. Open the door. Is it everything you dreamed of and more? Is your spirit finally able to soar? With a smile you step inside for one last ride. Holding the hand of the devil one last time. <sighs> like I tell you guys, I was really on one <laughs> at this point in my life when I was like 19, 20, first falling into all the serious issues and that sort of shit. Um, it, like I said, if any of you, I just call it doors usually whenever I'm like looking at it, but yeah, I've always just called it doors, but if you guys have something neat that you would like to call it, let me know, because that's one of my favorite things that I've ever wrote. So, I really, like I said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this long format video of me just bullshitting to you, because your boy <laughs> gotta get a new laptop, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh man, it'd be like that sometimes, right? Sometimes shit hits the fan. Sometimes <laughs> the laptops do not survive the night. <laughs> but I love you guys so much. I appreciate all of the support. It really means the world to me that you guys get on here and spend time with me and get to know me. It's it's beyond anything that I realistically could have asked for when it comes to the energy inside of it, when it comes to the positivity and the love that we are able to spread to each other, all of it is so damn special, and I really wouldn't trade it for anything else in the entire world. If you told me that this is what we would be doing nowadays, I wouldn't have believed you. I really wouldn't have, man, and I know you guys know that. But we're here, and we're doing the thing, and we get better at it each and every day, and we have fun with it each and every day, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to get on here and spread and share some blessings together with each other, and to really, truly try to learn to look at life 
in a more positive manner that is emotionally healthy and sustains growth inside of our own hearts, our own minds, our own spirits, right? I think it's so important to grow in spirit and to have the knowledge of that and to allow your mind to flourish and to use that to create all of the things in your reality that you want to see in your life, whether it's love, whether it's a career, whether it's just good vibes that you want to carry yourself in every single day. You want to get rid of the addictions. You want to get rid of the mental health problems. Listen, I'm somebody who is here to tell you that you can fucking do it. You can do anything that you put your mind to. You can achieve any goal that you actually put the work into. You really can be anything that you want to be in this life. All you have to do is actually be it, right? Just actually be it. Do the thing. Show people that you know how to do the thing. Believe in yourself. It's that simple, man. It really is that simple, and it's so special that we have the opportunity to come here and do this with our lives, right? It's such a special, special thing. It really is. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all the support. I love you a million times over to infinity and beyond, right? Forever and ever. I feel like this will be a family and an amazing community with us. I love you guys so fucking much. If you're still here, you're one of the MVPs. You're one of the I will see you guys later. I love you. Peace.